Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today we're gonna play with this big, beautiful butterfly right here. And we're gonna do a little um, kind of technique that is like a little secret ingredient. I think you'll enjoy it, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this little piece of cardstock comes from the new paper pack called Flora Number no. Six from Cardabella. I absolutely love it. But the design of my card it means that the center of this area is a little too dark, so I wanna lighten it up. So I'm gonna use one of my Waffle Flower blending brushes and some Brutus Monroe pigment ink. This is the um, Alabaster White ink. And just kinda lighten up this area right here. So it's you're, what you're kinda doing is the opposite of inking the edges. You're gonna ink from the middle to kinda lighten it up instead of inking from the edges to kinda darken it. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm just picking up ink and I'm just running this around. You'll see that kind of in this area, it already does it on the paper. So I'm really just kind of mimicking that over on the, um, on the rest of the card. So I'm gonna lighten this area up in the center just by using my blending brush and going around. Can you see how it's kind of like making a light, like it's highlighting the area? That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Now I wanna tell you the reason I'm starting with this part of the process is this needs to dry. And we're using pigment ink and the Brutus ink does dry, but it does take a little longer than anything else. And I'm laying this on pretty thick. So I wanted to do this first. Now on camera, I think it's washed out. I don't think you see it as well. There you can see where it's wet, so you can see where I did it. But that just kind of knocks back the background to kind of give me a place to build on top of. So I'm gonna sit that aside and let it dry. And we're gonna move on to the next step. Now the next step for me is gonna be coloring. And I'm gonna use the new Colorista markers that we picked up for the store. I really, really like these. And we're gonna use these three colors to make four colors. Really almost five, but really four colors. So I want you to see how this is gonna work. It's really cool. All right, so these are my little butterflies. And I do need to stamp two of them. And I'll show you what we'll do with those in a minute. I'm gonna use the brush nib of the um, pencil or the pen. Do you see that? It's kind of the brushy point. You don't want to use for this one the bullet tip and you'll see why. What we're going to do is I've, whatever colors you choose, you just want to make sure you have a dark color, a mid color, and a light color. Okay. So I'm going to start with my dark color in the center and I'm just going to flick color out and don't really worry too much about where, see how that went off? You don't care. We're going to fussy cut this in a minute. All I'm doing is flicking color from this center section to get us started, okay? And I really want this to kind of cover a pretty good bit of the middle. And then down here, I'm still making sure I've got that color there. And then also where the, le oh, the leaves, these are not leaves, these are wings, where the wings overlap, we wanna have a little bit of that dark peeking out. Do you see that there? It looks like a mess, doesn't it? It will look like a mess, trust me, this is so fun. Um, I told everybody at work, I was like, this is like taking you back to being a kid, this kind of coloring, because you really don't have to think you just kind of do the process and it's pretty neat when it when the final project is seen. All right, so I'm gonna keep coloring, doing this flick of the dark from the middle. Flick it out here as well. And you see, I'm not even worried about that. I'm overlapping the little body. I'm not worried about that. I just wanna get that color flicked out. And I wanna make sure I get it where all the little wings overlap, that little bit of dark, just like that. I think I'll put some down here too where these guys are kind of here just a little bit to show that area. Also, I know that butterfly wings would mimic each other. I'm not really trying to make them look exactly alike. I'm just trying to get kind of close. All right, so this color, if you have this same set, these are the rich shades. This one is called lipstick. Love this red, by the way. It's a really good one. Then I'm going to take the pink. So I've chosen from that set the color cocktail pink, and I'm going to use the brush nib again. And this time I'm going right to where I ended, and I'm going to flick some more color. So you see where that's going to overlap a bit? I really like how that looks. I like how it kind of adds another little layer of shadow right there. Not really blending anything. I'm just flicking some color on. What I do want for this technique I'm showing you, I do want some of that pink to be out here, just loose out there ready for the next color, and you'll see why. That's where we're gonna make our fourth color is where that pink overlaps or hangs over the edge. So we'll do it there, I'm gonna do it here. Can you see how messy I'm doing that? Really, messy is good with this, pro with this process. Now for me, this is where the game changer happens. This color is called teal, 
and again, I'm gonna use the brush nib. Now watch what's gonna happen here. Instead of me starting at the middle and flicking out this time, I'm gonna start from the edge and flick inward. And watch what happens where these two colors meet. It's so pretty. Look at this, we get this kind of purple that creates a fifth color that we didn't even have to choose. It just chooses itself for us. So you see where those meet and we get that purple, isn't that pretty? You're gonna do that all around the butterfly. Just flicking that color in, and everywhere you left that little bit of pink off of the red, it creates that. Isn't that beautiful? It's just amazing, I just love it, so pretty. And anywhere you want more purple to show, just cross that line a little bit more. I'm gonna bring that up so you can see what I'm talking about. Do you see how that purple is created? It just looks like we have like painted each of those little strokes and we didn't, we just flicked this color in. By the way, this will work with other markers. If you have other alcohol markers, this will work. What makes this one so good is we're using this brush nib so we can get that little, that kind of feathery point. And that's why this looks so pretty on this butterfly. All right, so there's that one. Let's do the second one. Do you guys remember being a kid and coloring those books with that clear ink that would make the image show up underneath or make colors appear? That's what this reminds me of. Whenever this teal crosses that pink and how it just makes that purple appear, I think that's so pretty. So there's our beautiful butterflies. And I know it doesn't look like a whole lot yet. Just stick around. All right, what I'm gonna do next is go back to my lipstick color. And this time I wanna use the smaller nib. And this butterfly has this little white line around the edge of the wing. I'm gonna come in there and color that with the red. I found that that really tied everything back together and I thought it was really pretty. So I'm just touching that little white line to get that little red in there. You'll see on this side I'm coloring versus the side on the left that I haven't colored yet the difference. You'll see how this really ties it all together. See how that just closes it up? I think it looks so pretty. Now I'm gonna do that same thing to the other one and then we're gonna fussy cut them out. Okay, so we've got them both colored. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my memento marker, the brush tip on it as well, and I'm gonna go around the edges. Do you see how the edges are kinda of white? I'm gonna go around these edges. I'll keep it here so you can see, and I'm just gonna color. Do you see how that just knocks that back? I love this. I think this makes it look like we did a really good coloring job, or even a really good cutting job, even if we didn't. So I'm gonna run around and do this. Now, I'm trying to be careful not to color on the back of this guy. Sometimes my marker will slip and I'll get on the back. I want both sides of this um, butterfly to be a feature. You'll see that in a minute when I show you the, the uh, secret ingredient that makes this one work. But for now, I just wanna to try to make sure all of that black coloring stays on the outside edge and not on the back. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these butterflies into half butterflies. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I wanna take each one and I wanna cut it from the center to the top, right down the middle, okay? So I'm gonna make a half on this side and the same on this one. Now what's gonna happen is I wanna take this wing and put it with this wing and now I wanna take this wing and put it with this wing. And that's what we're gonna create is a half butterfly that lifts up and we can see that color that we did underneath it from the side, okay? But what we need to do is we need to color the back of one side as well. So this guy is gonna live on top. I wanna turn him out this way. So I need to color this side. These won't matter. These will get glued down to the page with our little secret ingredient in the middle. So let me show what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna do exactly what I did um, on the other side, except without any lines. So I'm just gonna take my red, starting in the middle, and flick it out. Won't really matter how far, we just wanna get some color back here so that when you see this from the side on the card, it looks like it's the same as the front. So flick some of that red on. Don't even stress, just flick it out there, okay? Then let's go to our paint. Still using that brush nib, flick this out. And now to the teal, and this time, instead of flicking outward like we did, before, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull back because we wanna get that purple and that teal on there together. I think that is so cool how that purple just appears and it's the perfect tone. I guess if the marker's doing the work, it's gonna make it the right tone, right? Isn't that pretty? I can see this down on a flower. If you have some flowers or if you wanted to make some flowers, maybe you make your own ephemera. Wouldn't this little flicky situation where you get all these colors be a good way to make some paper flowers? I think it'd be neat. 
All right, so we've got that done. Now the other thing I'm gonna do, just because I'm here and I don't want this to show otherwise, I'm gonna go back to my little black memento pen, and right here where the body is black on the other side, I'm gonna do that here too, just so if any of that bleeds through, it won't really matter if it, as far as if you can see the red. If we end it up like that, it'll stay black where they meet together. Okay, now for the fun part. So these guys, like I said, are gonna live on top of here because we're making open sideways butterflies. Okay, so this is a piece of scrap acetate that I have, and that's what I'm gonna use as my secret ingredient, okay? What I wanna do is cut a couple of strips that are a quarter of an inch um, by about three quarters of an inch, or maybe an inch. All I wanna do is make a piece that will hide behind my butterfly, so that's why I've made them this size. Now, we're gonna take this acetate and we're gonna fold it in half in our fingers and squeeze it. It does not have to be a perfect half, okay? Just so we get something like this. Do you see how that kind of pops? You see where we're going? We want this to act kind of like a lift on our butterfly, but not be seen. All right, we're gonna do the second one the same way. Now, you can see that's lifting. What we're gonna do is on one of the butterflies, we're gonna glue this down, and I'm using wet glue, and you might be like, why would you use wet glue with acetate? Well, I found that if you put your wet glue on enough for it to kind of cover the entire back, it literally makes your acetate invisible. So watch what we're gonna do. I've got enough glue on there to cover it, and I'm gonna glue this little piece of acetate right to the center of this butterfly on the top. So you see what I've done there? I've glued it right to the top, and you see how by having enough glue that when I squeeze it a little bit comes out the edge? It literally makes that acetate go away. Now you can kind of see it because there's a shine. Do you see that shine that's appearing? but honestly, in real life, it just kind of goes away, and that's pretty cool. Now what we want to do is add more, uh, more glue to our acetate here at the top, and we're going to put this little guy right on top of there, and you see how we're making this sideways butterfly? And I'm going to press all of it down so that everything lines up pretty close. You don't really have to be perfect because when it pops up, it doesn't have to be, you know, the lines don't have to be exactly the same. You see when this pops up, it just gives it body. Now check this out. Because of the way we did it, do you see how you can't really see the acetate? Of course, there's a tiny little piece. It makes you go where my acetate go, right? It goes right back to our rap song. Shannon said, I don't know, I don't know. She's in the room. She said it. <laughs> so you see how when my glue dries, that will really just be invisible. And on our card, a little butterfly will pop and he'll go flat in our um, envelope. The reason I did this is because I didn't want to use foam. I didn't want him to be so, um, I don't know, so level. Does that make sense? I wanted him to feel like butterfly wings. And if I'd used foam, I would have had to do a little more um, kind of couple of layers and stuff like that. And then you'd have had that foam showing. But this makes it just like a little half butterfly. And it's so neat. I love it. All right, let me do the other one the same way. So now we have two butterflies that go in different directions. and I just think that is so cool how that works. Now remember, this side we left blank because we're going to use that to glue it down. But then in our card, and when the recipient gets it, um, when they pull it out of the envelope, the little leaves will lift up on their little invisible lifts. All right, let's work on the card again. Okay, so from the same stamp set with the butterfly, I'm going to use the word sending. And the second little sentiment I'm going to stamp on here says lots of love. So on a piece of scrap white cardstock. I'm going to stamp sending. So there's that. And then, like we said, the word lots of love. Now what I want to do is I want to fussy cut around this a little bit. I just want to get some of this kind of curvy shape down here on the end. I'm not really directly fussy cutting anything perfectly out. I just want some curves here and there instead of just a block. I feel like this butterfly needs softer edges. Going back to my card front, and from the stamp set, I wanna show you these two stamps. I'm gonna use this one, which I think is so cute, the little trail, and also this antenna. I'm gonna use that as well. So we're gonna use that on, this, on the front here. So I've let this sit and dry a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back to my ink. Now, you see I have my sentiment here. Here's the reason. I want to see the placement of my sentiment where I want it to go, because I want my little trail to kind of go through this center section here. Does that make sense? I want it to end up here so the butterfly can kind of be beside it. So I kind of want to give myself a place to stamp. And I'm noticing this little circle in the loop here goes right over that little crossover on the paper. So that's where I'm going to stamp. It's like the fourth one in. So what I'm going to do is ink this guy up. 
If you need to make a pencil mark, of course you can do that, but I'm just gonna use that fourth one in right here and do my little stamp of my little butterfly trail line. Perfect, and now we'll test it. It should go just right. See that, so it'll come right behind it so you can see that. That's what I wanted. We'll pop this up in a minute. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna bring my butterfly over. Now this is what I'm gonna be using is this butterfly, but I need to make a little edit real quick. I wanna do it before I put it on because I have a habit of smearing this. I'm going to use my white pen. You knew I was, if I do a critter, he always gets something with white, right? So I'm gonna take this little guy and lay him down and I'm gonna put some little white dots out here on his wings. I just think this will be so pretty in that teal just to give it a little extra something. And I'll also do some down here at the bottom. And I wanna do this to the other one as well. I want them to kind of mimic each other. And I think I'll do it on the inside too. Now that I've got those little white dots where I want them, I wanna place this guy where he's gonna be. And I want him going something like this. I don't want him touching that little trail. I want him a little bit away from it like that. And I wanna stamp the antenna, okay? And I'm gonna put it right here so that it goes in this direction. And again, I'm just looking for where to stamp it. So I can see here where it needs to go right in that little section there. So I'm gonna ink it up. And then I'm gonna stamp it right here for my little butterfly. So I don't even have to cut those tiny little antenna out. That wouldn't have done me any good, would it? All right, let's add some glue. And then I'm gonna place him right between the antenna and his little trail line there. Get him where I want him. Isn't that cool? Now again, there's a glare on camera, so you're gonna see the acetate when the light hits it, but look how it looks like there is nothing lifting him up, like he just is an actual little butterfly. I just love that. So you could just stamp this guy and fold him in half and kind of get that same look, but I wanted his other wing design to show on the back too, so I wanted him to look, you know, like a whole butterfly, does that make sense? You of course could just do this on the inside and then fold your butterfly in half and glue him, but I thought he was super cute like that and I feel like that's a cool way to get that lift without having to use foam. All right, let's now use foam to put our sentiment on. So I got foam on the back and we want it to go just like this, kind of where we stamped that little guy. I just think that's so pretty, sending lots of love. And now I wanna work on the inside of the card. I'm using a white card base and on the inside, I'm gonna do and much happiness your way. So this is much happiness. So I'm gonna start with it. And you can see I placed that second butterfly here. That's where I want it to live. So I just wanted to give myself an idea of where it's going. So I'm gonna come right here and do much happiness. And then I have the tiny little ampersand off the set. I think this is really cute. So I'm gonna stamp that right next to it. So we've got, and much happiness, and then the words, or yeah, the words, your way. So that's gonna go here. You're gonna love all the sentiments you can do with this set. There's so many options. Now I wanna decide if I want another little um, butterfly trail. I think I do. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this guy here and show myself where I want the antenna. So I'm gonna get that antenna again. And this time he'll go in the other direction. So I'm gonna put him about here place my little butterfly back, and then we'll see where we want the trail to go. And I clearly just want it to kind of trail off, so we'll go somewhere like here. You can do pencil marks and all that if you need to. I just don't think it really needed it. I think I can just decide where I want to go by looking. Cleaning that ink up so I don't get it on the back of my card really quick, and now we can glue our second butterfly down. I just love how that looks. I just think it looks like a whole butterfly. I think it's neat. All right, so now we'll close our card down. And this will close, remember when you put it into your envelope, it'll press that down. So I'm gonna close this and crease it. And now we can add our card front to the front. And I think I'm just gonna glue it straight down and not pop it up. I have enough dimension with that butterfly already. So we'll just let it do all the work. We'll glue this down to the front, just like so. Now, when we put that into the envelope, this guy will be nice and flat, and the one on the inside is as well, and when they pull it out, they'll have a lifted up butterfly, and when they open on the inside, another one. I think those are so pretty. The coloring, how it gives it that dimension, I just think they turned out really, really good. 
Again, if you don't want to do all the work of cutting them in half and putting them back together, you could always just color the front and the inside and fold it. But I just thought it was important to have kind of the lines inside too, because it just looks like a whole butterfly laying there, doesn't it? There you go, guys. That is our secret ingredient, that little bit of vellum, which literally goes away, doesn't it? You really can't see it. Are you already thinking of all the things in your stash that you can do with this kind of vellum trick where you want something to lean forward like that? It works perfect. I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And remember, if you make a project using this stamp set, I want to see it or any project that you're making. I'd love to see it over on our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Just hit that red button. Um, it's free, so subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me and YouTube know that you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, bye now. Mm -hmm.